while we're on the conservatives doing music, let's cover this. Matt Walsh reposted this video from this weirdo. I don't know what's going on here. And Matt Walsh loved it because, you know, he, he's got to show as a fascist, he can't exclusively on modern contemporary culture he also has to show an alternative of what is the best version of what he's trying to sell so the best version of what he's trying to sell like an example of what is good art according to matt walsh is some of my favorite types of uh conservative commentary because like they always are really bad they're like following the mumford and sons aesthetic 10 to 12 years later mumford and sons is british this guy's a genuine appalachian why does everyone have to shit on rural people i don't understand please don't shit on this guy this song is is not against trans people or whatever okay let's listen to what he had to say people like you wish i could just wake up and it not be true but it is all it is living in the new world with an whole soul these rich men know the rich men lord knows it all just want to have total control want to know what you think don't shit on this man look at the other verse i wish politicians would look out for minors and not just minors on an island somewhere lord we got folks on the street ain't got nothing to eat and the obese milking welfare well god if you're five foot three and you're 300 pounds taxes ought not to pay for your bags of fudge rounds young men are putting themselves six feet in the ground because all this damn country does is keep on kicking him down <laughs> hey man please don't shit on this guy he's got some good ideas <laughs> Is against welfare queens despite farmers being the most subsidized American industry. I mean, he's not even a farmer. He very much, most likely, if he lives in Appalachia, which he seems to be living in uh, Appalachia, he probably does not have a job. Like many people in that region don't have a job because they used to work in coal mines and no longer can work in coal mines because uh, of automation or because, sorry, woke liberalism has eviscerated the coal mining industry. It's just like, huh. Living in Alabama right now and everyone here has a boner for this song. Let me pick up my banjo and cry because motherfuckers out here getting snapped. Yeah, bro, if you're that poor, if you're a poor guy living in uh, this region, how in the ever-loving fuck are you shitting on other poor guys? You're literally like, oh, man, I hate the rich people defending pedophiles. Fine, on board with that message. That's good. And then immediately he's like, you know who's real bad? A different kind of poor guy. I hate how poor I am and how the rich have fucked me over. But you know what I hate more than that? A different kind of poor guy. Poor guy down the street. How is this any different? I talk about this all the time about like the most American thing you can do is be a fat guy and shit on a guy that's like slightly fatter than you. Like Donald Trump does with Chris Christie. It's so funny that this is like the white Lizzo version of that where he's like, oh man, I hate how fucking poor I am. But like other people that are also poor, fuck those guys. Those guys are the real problem. It's like, what do you mean? Everyone shitting on this guy is so lame, low hanging fruit though. What? You, wh why? What, what's what's going on? Is there, Am I not allowed to just like a uh, joke? Am I not allowed to crack jokes now? What's happening? Do I have to always take uh, take rural uh, Kentucky, uh, Alabama, West Virginia guys with the uh, kitty gloves? Is that what's happening? I Let's hear. Selling my soul, working all day, overtime hours for bullshit pay so i can sit out here and waste my life away it's funny because like let me tell you something it's funny because a lot of this stuff like a lot of the criticism especially when it comes to social safety nets is always hilarious because the reality is there's always going to be a way for these people to survive right if there's no jobs, if there's nothing going on, they have to survive somehow. The government is not just going to let them fucking die. So instead, they basically let them barely live by allowing them to take advantage of a patchwork structure of like minor social welfare that barely lets them exist. How does that work? It works in the same way that it does in cities, but especially so in places like this where there's just not a fucking job. Cost of living is already cheap. You already have a fucking house, right? For the most part. Then what do you do? You get disability. You're either on disability or some form of welfare because how, the, how else the fuck are you going to make money? So then turning around and like shitting on that concept is, you know, really frustrating. Song touched my soul, Jimbo. Yeah, I mean, he, he has a good voice, okay? Liberals are racist to white Americans. <laughs> Drag back home and drown my troubles away. It's 
it's a damn shame what the world's gotten to for people like me, people like you. Wish I could just wake yeah. up and it not be true, but it is. Oh, it is. These rich men know the rich men. Lord knows it all. Just want to have total control. Want to know what you think. Want to know what you do. I understand his sentiment, and I certainly care more about rural America than most people, but something is wrong when you're enjoying being propped up by Matt Walsh types and has created a rumble at Rumble's direction. This man lives on 90 acres outside of Richmond, VA. Comparable properties in the area are $2 million listings. Um, I don't even personally think he has to be, like, dirt fucking poor. It's just that, like, there's a long and vibrant history of exactly this kind of voice, exactly, like, what he's biting from, okay? Like, a long library of content that he's, like, basically LARPing from. From, or basically biting from that straight up identifies the problem and will attack the actual vectors of oppression do you understand it, it's not new this isn't like a like a new type of music or a new type of song plenty of examples of uh of you know uh coal miners getting fucked over with the boss uh where the the direction with sung in this exact same style with this same voice inflection turning around and redirecting the anger at those who actually have caused their demise rather than you know random people that are also just as poor as this guy claims to be you know what i mean and they don't think you know but i know that you do because your dollar ain't shit and it's tax to no hand those are it. Oliver Anthony is an Appalachian country artist in the same vein as Tyler Childers and Zach Bryan. I mean, he will probably get very successful. He seemingly has uh, that that rural charisma. Weird question, but would you ever consider getting this guy on stream to chat about the issues he thinks about before Matt Walsh and his ilk get to him properly? Uh, I think Matt Walsh and his ilk have gotten to him already. Rich Men of North Richmond is the name of the song. Okay, let's pull up the lyrics. Wish I could just wake up and not be true, but it is. We are now political slaves to a massive class of politicians that can never be charged, but his enemy will always be charged and never guilty. <laughs> Living in the new world with an old soul. These rich men of North Richmond, North of Richmond, D.C. Lord knows they all just want to have total control. Want to know what you think? Want to know what you do? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Always so fucking funny to see Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh post shit like this, knowing they would be scared to stop in a gas station from my rural hometown. Grew up in a rural town where average household income was 27K or something, and everyone complains about welfare or, and disability, but majority of people are on it. That's what I mean. It's like, and they don't think you know, but I know that you do because your dollar ain't shit and it's tax to no end because a rich man north of rich man. <laughs> I wish politicians would look out for miners and not just miners on an island somewhere. That's bars. Lord, we got folks in the street, ain't got nothing to eat, and the obese milking welfare. <laughs> I live in Section 8 housing in Detroit. My haters will not come for me. I mean, it doesn't matter where you live. The reality is most of your haters or most of most haters online are haters because they don't go out in the real world at all. They do not they do not step foot outside. They live on a steady diet of chicken tendies that mommy brings them. And that's pretty much it. Because if they would walk outside and see the sunlight for the first time or have to interact with another human, they would perish. They would turn into a cloud of mist, pink mist and dust. I love the Lord, we got folks on the street ain't got nothing to eat and these obese milking welfare. Like again, it hits on it hits on everything that I love, okay? I, I I'm I'm serious. I love this song. I love this song because in many ways, this is the most American song. Why? Because not only is he like LARPing as a poor guy, shitting on other types of poor guys, asking the gov government to help poor people, but also simultaneously shitting on other poor people that are getting help and the type of help that they're getting and also shitting on fat people, but you're fat. It's like, what do you mean? What what is happening? Anyway, let's continue. This song is about rural consciousness, though. It's just about rural consciousness. Okay. What, what does that mean? There's this idea where, like, if someone looks the part, fits the bill, and is, like... Like, I don't even have... First of all, let me just say something. I don't even... I don't think this is, like, as disagreeable as the way Twitter is making it out to be. But that doesn't mean that, like, you can't you know, crack jokes about it. Especially when it's one of my trigger points, at least, when I see, like I've mentioned eight times so far, when a poor guy or someone who is LARPing as a poor guy is shitting on other poor guys. It's just so frustrating. It is supposed to build up 
the other poor guys and and instill class consciousness rather than uh shit on a different kind of poor person having said all of that there's also this this idea that like uh possibly due to a tremendous amount of animosity from liberals towards like white people that are poor country folk people living in rural areas right that there is there's so much animosity towards like uh those people from bi-coastal liberals who are like well they voted for it they should fucking perish or whatever that people are hypersensitive to any kind of criticism that anyone from appalachia is is receiving okay especially in this community but like just because someone is from this area or someone is genuinely poor or someone is you know a working class person doesn't change the reality that they can't be a fucking dumbass. Of course they can. You know what I mean? Like, it's fine. Lord, we got folks in the street that ain't got nothing to eat. Let's hear that part. I wish politicians would look out for miners and not just miners on an island somewhere. Lord, we got folks in the street ain't got nothing to eat and the whole beast milk and welfare. God, if you're five foot three and you're three hundred <laughs> this is so perfect i'm sorry you're a fucking buffoon if you hear this and you're like bars okay this is what the rural people feel like okay well they're fucking stupid then okay i'm sorry whoever fucking believes this is dumb like this is awesome but not in the way that i guess uh some people would appreciate it i i find it awesome for a, a, a different reason <laughs> taxes ought not to pay for your bags of fudge rounds like what the fuck what are you what are you saying you can't on the one hand be like we need more government assistance for the poor and then simultaneously be like but not that kind of government assistance no fudge rounds what are you michael bloomberg what the fuck is this you know who has this? You know who has this attitude? You know who has unironically tried to make policy around exactly what he's saying? Michael fucking Bloomberg, who also was a Republican, by the way. Okay? Miss me with this bullshit. Also, he's shitting on short kings, which I don't like either. Lord, it's a damn shame what the world's gotten to for people like me, for people like you. Wish I could just wake up and it not be true, but it is. His voice sounds like you. With I think your brain is broken. Soul, these rich men know the rich men. Lord knows they all just want to have total control. Wanna Again, like, who, who does... <sighs> I'll give you another example. His only anger with the rich men of Richmond is that uh, they care about pedophilia and defending pedophilia more than they care about, like, uh, you know, uplifting poor people, but then targets welfare policies, turns around, and then says the only thing that they're doing is you. they want to know what you think, they want to know what you do. Lord knows they just want to have total control, but then he's, in his perfect world, he dreams of a world where, like, he gets to dictate the terms of welfare, who gets it, and also what they can purchase with it, which ironically is, just again american consciousness which is now a goal to not necessarily uplift anybody really not even yourself mind you okay not even yourself not even your neighbors but instead to to implement a level of control to the people that you feel are opposing you in the political process we don't even care about like fucking health care we don't care about any of that shit we don't care about social safety nets we only care about making sure we own the other side, implementing the same level of control that I feel is being implemented on me by those, uh, you know, by the pedophiles on the other side. That's it. I know what you think, wanna know what you do, and then I don't think you know, but I know that you do, cause your dollar ain't shit, and it's tax to no hen, cause the rich men, north the rich men. That's another, like, wild part about the tax part is just, like, what, what are you talking about? If the people you're talking about are just, like, making no money, well, they're, you know, trust me, they're not getting taxed the shit either. It is, in many respects, uh, identical to what we watched yesterday from Erie, Pennsylvania, of the Trump rally that the uh, More Perfect Union guy went to. And he talked to these people who were so close to getting it, right? But yet were so far away. So, also, why does man have a tree blind where he records? 
towards music. I mean, I think that's a deliberate choice. He just like, I assume this is his own uh, property where he hunts as well. The best part is that leftist political songs like this are all, always referencing actual historical res resistance and all these right wingers can think of is I wish I could wake up and be in a fantasy land where none of my imagined fears are real. Yeah. Anyway, I don't even know enough about the history of like bluegrass folk. I just know that some of the major artists from prior generations that did like old forms of country were absolutely in the exact opposite side of guys like this where they would advocate against uh, the carceral state. They would talk about the history of like labor militarism, uh, militant labor and, and its benefits and, and cops and Pinkertons and whatever the fuck that was in their way that truly stopped them from uh, achieving results that they wanted to. And now, obviously, this version of, of country music has turned into the, the very same commodity that you experience in every other facet of your lives where it's just like it's not necessarily about any kind of real labor action because we're so far removed from that and therefore all you got to talk about is how pissed off you are at some libtard for being gay and wanting to make your children gay if coal companies hadn't ravaged his hometown and there was still a strong union presence this would be left as he just has zero class consciousness yes he's also removed at least a couple decades removed from any kind of uh, class consciousness being instilled upon him because there is nothing there this is why i always talk about the secondary reason for labor unions to exist because it's not just about collective bargaining it's not just about collective action it's not about getting getting your fair pay and and benefits it's also about a uh, collective consciousness where you can instill class consciousness upon your fellow uh, working class individuals even if you don't necessarily recognize it and you're voting a certain way and when you rob it when you steal that, when you take that history away from people, and when you refuse to educate them, then all they got is... Join a union. Workers of all kinds are stronger I, I know, I've seen this, together. yes. Your millionaire boss will never understand your struggles. Take up arms against fascists. Ladies, if your husband ever puts his hands on you, kill him in his sleep. Um, actually, let's all be nice to the billionaires and police officers. If you don't like it here, you should leave. It's like, it's it's not even just that. It's also uh, redirecting the anger that you feel towards your fellow countrymen who have the exact same interests, who have the same exact interests in the workplace, who have, uh, who stand to gain uh, the most from, uh, you know, having, from unifying an action in some capacity. Anyway, I mean, yeah, we've already covered, uh, Pete Seeger, I've played many many times over obviously the irony is this one gets uh copyrighted the shit and this part of the vod will be muted why is pete seeker not talking about obesity and and welfare queens in this i that's what this is mid okay let's just say it let's be real it's mid why because he's not talking about welfare queens or his truck and how fat his truck is and how uh you know he loves fishing and and drunk driving i i don't really understand that yeah where where are the fudge rolls at is what i'm saying this doesn't speak to your your common experience your shared experience and uh therefore it's mid unlike that other guy who is speaking to what the rural folk really want and we're really feel anyway i hope you guys understand my perspective a little bit better here i've been selling my soul working all day overtime hours for bullshit pay like this part of the song is understandable which you know he gets it he gets that part but then he just deviates away from it and goes to very very silly places and it's not necessarily the rich men that fucked him over it is the the rich men of Richmond, north of Richmond, are only fucking him over in the sense that they're like trying to control the way he thinks and change his attitude about certain uh, issues, right? You don't get shit. Some think tank wrote their lyrics. Okay, I don't think it's like that, dude. I think this is probably not. No think tank wrote fudge rounds chatter. Chat gives the game away and they never go outside and talk to real people and they say this guy's a plant. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think ultimately he's just, I mean, it is real. There is a lot of people who feel this way. That's why his songs will be very popular for sure, you know? know it'll be highlighted by the likes of matt walsh and, and he'll pop off because there's like a there's like a desperate need for right wingers to also listen to art that they feel uh represents their values right there are plenty of people who have these kinds of uh 
opinions. He's not a plant. He's just getting boosted by people who are paid by billionaires to subvert class consciousness who don't even do it intentionally. They just do it as second nature at this point. Anyway, here's what Matt Wall said about the song. The main reason the song resonates with so many people is, isn't political. It's because the song is raw and authentic. We are suffocated by artificiality. Everything around us is fake. A guy in the woods pouring his heart over his guitar is real. First of all, that's not even true. This is quite literally fake in the same way that you would consider any other version of this to be fake. Dumbass. He put a fucking $3,000 microphone in the woods to film this, okay? Obviously, it's fake from that rega uh, in that regard. It's just that's how all uh, this kind of media works. It's fake in the same way that, like, I'm sitting in my living room talking to you, okay? Uh, most music is essentially computer-generated. Movies are CGI. The news is fake. Most of what you see on social media is fake. AI, Photoshop, deepfakes, etc. We crave authenticity because we don't have have nearly enough of it. It's hilarious that some deranged MAGA freak listened to Iron and Wine and decided to do a shitty knockoff version laced with unhinged right-wing resentments and you're clapping over it like seals as if it's the most brilliant music ever created. Listen to the original. No, Matt, it's resonating because it is political. Don't soften it. The common people have a clear enemy and this ginger identifies them without holding back, which is refreshing. This fella also wails a good note and picks good to good too. So people like it.